Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy and today I'm doing a full solo playthrough of Inventions, Evolution of Ideas. This is the newest game from one of my favorite designers, Vital Lacerda. In fact, Inventions was my number one most anticipated game of 2024. This is an extremely heavy Euro game with a ton of rules. Just keep in mind that I'm probably gonna make a few mistakes and forget a few things here or there but I'll do my best as I always do. Now I went ahead and I got everything set up for a solo game. You're gonna wanna set it up as if you were playing a three player game. And that's because we're gonna kind of be playing against a team of two bots here. The first is Kronos and he's gonna be in blue and he's gonna be taking really simple predictable actions. And the second solo opponent is Hephaestus. He's a little bit more complex and plays much more like a regular player. In order to win, we actually have to score better than their combined scores, which is why we only have one scoring marker for them. We've set the turn order so that it is Kronos, then us in purple, and then Hephaestus. We've set up their markers like it outlines in the book. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go into a full description of setup, but I do wanna talk about the special way that we do what they call the Stone Age round setup because it's a little bit different in the solo game. Kronos goes first. We need to look at their starting private milestone. Over here we have the public milestones, all of the A milestones are there. Here we've randomly assigned the B milestones into the private milestone area. And because Kronos is blue, they have agriculture. So we need to take the era two idea card that matches the agriculture, and you can see it right there. This is the prerequisite for being able to invent this irrigation idea. So Kronos gets this card and they're gonna replace one of the idea cards that is already out on the map. They're looking for an idea of the same type. Now there are three different types. You have this brown idea, which is a technology. You have the white idea, which is culture. And then you have this sort of grayish green, which is economy. Their irrigation card is a technology, so they wanna replace another technology. All we have here is the wheel. So they're gonna actually discard the wheel and replace it with their irrigation. They take their leftover influence token and place it in the leftmost spot above their idea. And they're gonna place out either one or two citizens. So you just look at this specialist tile, you can see some have uh, one citizen at the bottom and some have two. This one has two. So he just places two of his tokens on there. You can see from this line that this represents Africa. So he's gonna place his meeple there and also add a citizen. And maybe I'll just stand all of them down so they're easier to see. And there we go, that's sort of initial setup done for Kronos. And now we get to take our setup turn and it works pretty much the same as it would in a multiplayer game. Since we started with cotton, we got this idea, silk, but instead of putting it out there, it just comes here onto the right side of our board. This is where we put the ideas that we're working on that we haven't quite been able to put out into the world yet. And as part of setup, we just drew the top card of the idea deck and we got writing and then we just populated the display. So we actually get to pick one of these remaining ideas to be our sort of starting area. I like the look of the tanned leather. So I think we're gonna go up there. Now that is a culture card. And as you can see, it's gonna require two citizens. And if you look onto my board, you can see I have my citizen tokens organized into different specialties. So this one is a trader, this one is an artisan, and this one is a thinker. And these two over here are scholars and they're essentially wild citizens. They can do any job. So because that idea is a culture idea, we're gonna need artisans and I'm gonna need two of them. Well, I only have one, so I'm also gonna have to use one of my scholars. They go onto that tile and then I get to use the special ability of the tile. In this case, I get to place a citizen from my supply onto any of the places of the world. For now, I think I'll just place them right here. 
I then I'm going to place my extra influence token. Place it face up. It goes onto the leftmost spot. Not going to get the victory points, however. And then I also get to place a citizen in the corresponding region, which is Europe. Now to finish up, Hephaestus is going to do a similar thing as Kronos. He started with mining, so he's going to take this Proto City card, and he's actually going to choose the first available region that's directly after Kronos. So if you look on the map here, you can see there are little numbers under each of the locations, and it forms this little circular path across the world that the game calls the Migration Path. It can be a little confusing there because number two is kind of stuck there in the middle, but it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. And we're going to be using that counterclockwise path quite a bit in this game. So Kronos ended up going to location one. So Hephaestus is going to look at location two and is going to place their idea there. And then they just go through the same process, placing a citizen on the specialist tile and then placing a citizen and their meeple out onto the corresponding location. And the very last thing we need to do is to remove any of the ideas that were out here that have not been claimed. So this seawall goes away, as does the fermentation. At the end of all that, we have basically just done one of the actions in the game, which is called present an idea. We'll be able to present more ideas in these locations. We'll also be able to invent the ideas, possibly innovate on them, and then share them with the world. I'm going to explain how all of that works as I play, just like I always do. So let's just go ahead and jump on in and get started with round one. As you can see on the turn order track, Kronos goes first. And his turns are super simple because he always basically does the same thing. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to move to the next location. And again, we're going to follow that migration path. So we started in location one, he's going to move to location two. He's now going to look in that area. Oh wait, we forgot to, uh, <laughs> here we go, we needed to place Hephaestus's uh, influence marker there. Okay, now we're good. So he's going to look in this area, and he basically always just wants to evolve an idea to the next level. So let's just quickly go over how an idea evolves in this game. It's pretty important. It's the name of the game after all. So the first thing that you do is you present an idea, and that's what we've already done. You can see these ideas here have already been presented. You know that because there are citizens to the left of the idea. If Kronos was in a location that was empty and didn't have an idea, then that's what he would want to do. He'd want to present a new one. This location already has an idea, so now he wants to take it to the next level by inventing the idea. That's what this location is for, and that symbol, and you can also see it right here. By the way, the symbol for presenting an idea is that one right there. Here in this central area, these are basically all of the actions in the game. We'll get to that in a second. So right now, this space is empty. That means that the idea hasn't been invented yet, so that's what he's going to do. He's just going to take one of his citizens and place it there. Now, what's important is that there is a prerequisite to all of these ideas. This one shows mining as a prerequisite. And if you look over here, that's actually one of the private milestones of Hephaestus. Now, if it were us, we wouldn't be able to invent this idea because we don't know mining yet. All we know is cotton and these four up here, the origin of language, control of fire, stone and bone tools, and transportation. But the bots cheat a little bit. They have a little bit more knowledge than we do. So anything that's on the board, they know, even if it's a private milestone. So you can just think of the bots as the private milestones are just like the public ones. They know it. So Kronos is able to invent this. Now, when you invent a card, you actually flip it to its invented side. And that actually opens up another little, you know, worker placement spot here. This is the innovate spot. This is kind of the third evolution of the idea where someone can go here and, you know, make that invention even better. The trick is the same person that invented the idea can't innovate on it. It has to be somebody different. 
but innovation is the only step that is not mandatory. It is completely optional. So no one has to come here, but it's an opportunity that could be valuable. And you'll see that as we go forward. The last step in the evolution of an idea is to actually share the invention with the world. That's that symbol right there. And you can see here, that's the innovate symbol. Now you'll see what happens when you share an idea later. But for now, I just want you to know that in order to share an idea, you have to have been involved in one of the steps of the previous process. You either had to present the idea, invent the idea, or innovate on the idea in order to share it. And Kronos would always prefer to share an idea rather than innovate on it. So if Kronos was going to take an action and it looked like this, then they would share the idea rather than innovate on it because they're there. The only reason that they would innovate is if they hadn't been involved in any steps of the process. And so all they could do is innovate. Don't worry if that doesn't make too much sense right now. It will start to make sense as we go along. So Kronos invented the idea and as a reward for doing that, they get to take one of these progress tiles. And we have, I have them stacked up here, just trying to save space. So we have seven progress tiles in each of the three different types of ideas. And they're gonna take the one that matches whatever type of idea they invented. So in this case, a culture. And then you're gonna look at which location they're in. So in this case, location two. So they're gonna take the number two tile and just add it to their board. That'll be worth victory points at the end of the game. How many victory points, you ask? Well, it depends on what difficulty level you're playing at. We're gonna be playing on easy today, so that's gonna be worth two points to them at the end of the game. There we go, that's Kronos' turn completely done. I promise in the future that's gonna go super fast. I just wanted to make sure I explained it a little bit. Now we look at turn order, we're next. The first thing we do at the beginning of our turn is we look at our influence track. Our marker starts on one, and because we're in this area here, that means that we're gonna get one of these chain tokens. You can see if we had been in the four to seven range, we would get two chain tokens, and at the very top there, three. We're now gonna take one of these 10 actions, and we're gonna use our little longer pillar here, it's known as the Epoch Pillar. This first round, this first era, works a little bit differently than the following eras. So we're gonna do this in this first round. Now I've already explained those top four actions. Those are sort of the core actions. They're involved in sort of progressing ideas. I'll explain these bottom six as I use them. I think I immediately want to do a travel action. The steps to follow to do each action are sort of illustrated right here beside each one. You also have this great player aid. Just flip it over here and we can see the travel action. And it says the first thing we get to do is gain an aspiration tile set to culture. So here are our aspiration tiles. You can see you can set it to any of the three different types of ideas. So we just have culture facing up. That's gonna remind us that at the end of our turn, we're gonna get to take one of the culture progress tiles. These aspiration tiles are basically just standing in for those tiles. It means we don't have to make a decision about that until the end of our turn. The next thing we get to do is move one of our citizens that's on the map to an adjacent location. I wanna move this guy right up here. We now look to see if there is a sage in that location. And that's that brown figure right there. It's probably hard to see. At the beginning of the game, every location has one. So we get to take that sage get to kind of place it over here into our civilization. At the end of the second era, that will become a scholar for us. We can then look at the knowledge tile that's there. And if we have a chain action, we can take whatever action is shown. And we have one chain action available. And that's gonna let us perform the present an idea action. The first thing we get to do is to play an idea card. And we can play it to any of these empty locations. And there's a couple of tempting ones. That one up there in the upper right, that's pretty tempting because we would immediately get three points. 
but I actually want to come right down here with my silk. We now have to spend a matching specialist. So this is an economic card. So we need to spend one of our traders. We put it on here, only needs one. And now we get to gain the benefit of that tile. And this tile is gonna let us take an invent action. The very first thing we need to do is check our milestone preconditions. Now I want to invent the silk that I just put out here. And the precondition is to know cotton, which we do. The next thing we get is an aspiration token set to the technology side. So again, at the end of our turn here, we'll get to pick out one of the seven cultures and one of the seven technology progress tiles. You'll see that in a second. We now need to send a matching specialist onto that location right there. Now, we're out of traders, but we have a scholar, so they can stand in. We just set them right there. That shows that we've now invented this silk. We get to flip the card. And now the silk is ready to be either innovated upon by someone other than me, because I can't do it, or I could share my invention with the world. And there we go. That is a great illustration of what this game is all about. You don't want to just take one action. You want to take one action, then chain into another action, which will give you another action. Now, before we pick our tiles, we need to flip over that knowledge tile. And then get our chain token back. As we use these actions out here and flip them over to their two point side, at any time, someone can go to one of those locations, take the same action that I did, and instead take all the points that are showing on the board and then reflip those over. I'm sure you'll see that at some point. Okay, so now we get to do phase three of each of our turns, which is we get to convert any of these aspiration tiles that we got into actual tiles. Every player has their own personal player aid packet here, which is awesome, it goes through each of the seven tiles of every type. And it gives you a nice detailed breakdown of each one. We can use this to pick which of the progress tiles we want. Oh, and I just noticed we forgot to refill our hand of ideas. You always get to have two ideas here sitting and waiting, ready to be presented. So we can pick from any of those that are on the display, including the top of the deck. I think I'll go for this musical notation. As you can see, my society already began knowing how to make flutes and how to make boats. So learning about musical notation only makes sense, I think. Then everything just slides down. I think I'm gonna go for navigation. Ooh, or roads. Yeah, actually, let's do roads. So you just take this and replace it. And now we get to take a brown technology. And, ooh, yeah, I think I know which one I want. I definitely want to go for patron. Now, these aren't going to do anything until they're out on our board built. And right now, phase four of our turn, we can decide whether or not we want to build these or just leave them there. Now, at the moment, the cost to build these would be right here, two influence. And we only have one influence right now, so we can't even afford to build even if we wanted to. Now, as you get more and more of these, the cost goes down. And if you filled all four of these slots, then it doesn't cost any influence in order to build. Don't worry, you're gonna get to see how building works very soon. And there we go, that is the end of my very lengthy turn. It's now Hephaestus' turn. The first thing we do is take their shuffled deck of cards, just draw the top card, place it on the leftmost space, and they are gonna attempt to do the action that is shown in the box. If they can't do that action, then they'll try the next one and so on. So it looks like they want to attempt to share an invention. And unfortunately, it does look like they're gonna be able to do that. They're gonna be able to share this proto city. I was thinking about maybe trying to come in here and innovate just so I could be a part of this if this very thing happened, but I decided against it, probably the wrong move. 
Now they would move forward to the next location. They would see if they could do the action and they would keep going around until they found the first spot where they could do this share an invention. It's gonna take them all the way back around to where they started. And then they're gonna share this invention. Now, the way this works is everybody who was involved in each step of the process is gonna get a little benefit. The person who shares the invention is gonna to get to take one of these wealth tiles. They're just gonna put it right there on their board. That's gonna be worth points at the end of the game. Because we're playing on easy, that's gonna be worth three points at the end of the game. Now keep in mind, in order to have shared this invention, they had to have been a part of it in some way. So they either had to be the one who, you know, presented the idea in the first place, they either had to be the one who invented it, or the one who innovated on it. Now for presenting the idea, they're gonna get points equal to the era of that idea, in this case two. So they're gonna get two points for every one of their citizens that they had on here. They only have one, so they're gonna get two points. And then we place the citizen into the location. The person who invented the idea, they get to keep the card. Now, Kronos and Hephaestus, they share these cards. They're just going to be worth two points at the end of the game. And then the citizen always goes into the location. Oh, and we forgot to put his um, epoch marker onto the action. Unlike Kronos, he's going to be using his pillars and placing them on these action spots. And there you go. You got to see the entire evolution of an idea from being presented to being invented that one wasn't innovated on, it was then just shared with the world. And now this spot is open for a new idea. And that is the end of Hephaestus' turn. And in fact, that's the end of the first era. Unlike the next four eras, which will be three turns each, this first era is just one turn. And we need to do a little bit of end of era cleanup. First, Kronos is going to get to place another one of their influence markers. To do that, they're going to move to the next location where they don't have an influence marker. Happens to be right there in location three. They're going to place their marker furthest to the left, and then they're going to score whatever the most valuable amount of points is. In this case, it's five. We take the used action card and we just put it underneath the deck. And then we would adjust our influence. Now you can see if our influence marker was down here, we'd actually get one influence. And then if it's up there, you actually lose one. And if it's at the very top, you lose two. In this little middle area, nothing changes, so we can just leave that alone. And that's basically it. We just move immediately into the second era. And as you can see, Kronos is still first player, so they get to go. Now I'm gonna start speeding things up a little bit, or otherwise this uh, playthrough will take four hours. Kronos always moves to the next location, and we look and we see there's no idea there, so he's going to present an idea. Now, he just presents the rightmost idea from the idea display. He then just places his citizens there, and he never receives any of the benefit of the specialist tile. And that's it. That's Kronos done. We're next, and now I get to explain how this action board works. Each of the next four eras is going to consist of three turns. In the first turn, we're going to play one of our season columns out here to the board. In the second turn, we're going to play our second season column. And then on the third turn, we're going to move our epoch column to another space. And there are some very crucial restrictions to how we can play our columns out here. As you can see, there are these five horizontal forums, each with two actions in them. As a rule, you can never have more than two of your pieces in one forum. So that means we can't play our column here or here, because we can only have one piece in that forum. So right now, rather than having 10 actions to choose from, we actually only have eight. We can play where Hephaestus goes, so we could do this. But if any of our columns 
winds up in the same action space as any of his columns, then he gets two points. But likewise, if any of his columns ends up in the same action space as one of ours, we get an influence. So we're not really blocking each other, we're kind of blocking ourselves as we take actions. It's kind of interesting. Now, of course, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First things first, we look to see how many chain tokens we're gonna get. We only get one. And now we have to decide what we want to do. One thing's for sure, we are dangerously low on specialists. We only have this one thinker here. I think I'm gonna go here. Now this action is called calling specialists. First thing we get is an economic aspiration. We then get to bring one or more of our citizens home from one location on the map. And they're gonna become a specialist based on what the idea is in their location. So I'm gonna bring my citizen there in Europe and they're gonna become an artisan. Now I can take a chain action on one of my inventions. You can see here the flute would let me take a gain influence action, but I want to do this boat, which is gonna let me share an invention. The only invention on the board is the silk, and I'm the only one here, so that's even better. Because I shared the invention, I'm gonna get this wealth tile. This wealth tile is gonna be worth one point for every two of our citizens that is anywhere except for our supply. And we have 30 citizens all together. So if we can get them all out, that'd be worth 15 points. Because I'm the one that presented the idea, I get to score two points. And the guy goes out into South America. And then because I invented, I get to keep this invention and add it over here. It's a little out of room. And sort of overlap these, it's no big deal. Now I haven't mentioned it yet, but we have these three goals that we got at the beginning of the game as part of setup. At the end of the game, we're gonna get to score two of them. And this goal here is saying, I'll get 10 points if at the end of the game, I have inventions from era two, three, four, and five. And this silk is from era two. This one in the middle is giving me points at the end of the game based on the location that I have my influence tokens at. I want to have them on two, four, five, and seven. And you can see I started with one on five, so that's good. And then this one is about having citizens in certain locations at the end of the game. In this case, three, four, six, and seven. So these sort of outside locations. So we'll be keeping these in mind, but... Not too important right now. So we're gonna get an economic progress tile. I think I'm gonna go for number two. This one is gonna let us get some more scholars, which I think is gonna be helpful because we're kind of low on specialists right now. And look at this, we're all filled up. So we can build one of these and not have to spend any influence. Now, actually we can build as many as we want, but we're restricted based on what our current milestone is. So because our milestone is era two, we can only build two minus one or one tile per turn. And I think I want to build this one, our technology tile. Now we can place it anywhere. I'm gonna place it right here and that's gonna give us another artisan. The cost of building these is one matching specialist. So in this case, a thinker. And all you have to do is exhaust them. They go into this exhausted area. Additionally, you have to exhaust a specialist for every tile that is adjacent. So in this case, there's no tiles adjacent, so that's fine. And then you'd also get a discount based on each invention of the same type. So we have two economic inventions and one cultural invention, so we don't have any technology inventions. So our cost is just to exhaust one thinker. And I'd love to build more of these, but 
I've met my threshold, so that's it. That's my turn. All right, Hephaestus' turn. Flip over the card. And it looks like they want to travel. And there we go. They're placing in the same action spot as us, so we get a very much needed influence. Now, the game comes with this really nice booklet that handles all the solo rules. And I'm going to be consulting this quite a bit for Hephaestus' turns, because sometimes they work a little bit differently than ours. In the case of travel, he's going to move to the next location. And again, you have to be very careful of this, because he's in two... And so he's going to go down to three. I can't tell you how many times I think that that location is <laughs> between four and five. Now he's going to check to see if there's a sage there. If there wasn't, he'd move on to the next location. But there is, so he's going to grab it. Just add it to his board. That's going to be worth two points at the end of the era. And then he's going to do this thing that uh, the bots are going to do a lot, where they're going to gain a progress tile. And the progress tile is going to be whichever type of idea is in the space, and then the number of the space. Now, in this case, when there is no idea there, they're just going to look to the rightmost idea on the display. So that's a technology, and he's in space three, so he's going to take that tile. Now, just like us, they can only have each tile once. They can't have multiple copies of the same tile. But as you can see, each bot has their own separate area, so it is possible for them to both take one tile. There's only two of each tile in a three-player game. So if for some reason he already had taken that tile, he would just move on to the next number that he didn't have. He's also going to place a citizen in that location. And now he's going to attempt to take a chain action. And right now he does have one chain action that he can take. So he's actually going to move it here. Unlike us, when they do chain actions, they just move on to the next action on their card and attempt to do that. But in this case, they are going to flip over that tile. And now they're going to try to do what we just did, which is uh, the call specialists. So he's going to move to the next region that has one of his citizens in it. So there we go. He goes all the way around the world Gets back to location two. And now he's going to remove one of those back to the supply. And then gain a progress tile using the same method. Now here again, nothing there. So it's going to be a technology number two. By doing this, the bot is scoring points, but also removing tiles from play so that we can't get them. And now if you look, there's a chain action on this one as well, so if he had had another chain action that he could have taken, he could have kept going. But he only has the one, so he has to stop. He'll be getting more as we go along. But for now, he's done. And that was the end of the first turn of the second era. We're going to keep doing this all the way through era 5. And then once we reach era 6, we're going to do a scoring. Okay, Kronos is going to move over to the next location, and he's going to invent. That's going to get him the number five cultural progress token. And now it's our turn, and we can share that invention. I really want to do that because I want that wealth tile there. We have one chain that we can use. Problem is, if we just take the share action, then we're going to be giving them two points. Would like to try to avoid that. Okay, and I think I see a way of doing it. Let's actually present an idea. Both of these ideas are really identical. Let's go ahead and present writing down there. We're going to need an artisan. And that's going to let us present another idea. And so we'll do musical notation. Going to need another artisan. And then that's going to let us share an invention. Boom. We're going to go ahead and share tanned leather. Because we're sharing, we get the wealth tile. 
Now, if we didn't want the wealth tile, or maybe we already had that particular one, then instead we can get a wild aspiration. We would just put it to the question mark side and at the end of our turn, we could pick from any of the tiles. But I actually do want that wealth tile. Plays it right there. Because we presented the idea, we're gonna get two points per citizen. So that's gonna be four points. And Kronos will get the card for being the inventor. There we go. That was a pretty successful action. We got to <laughs> put down two uh, of our ideas, which is great. Now we get to take two more. We, we always get to refill. I think I'll get some glass and that. Caravel. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. Some kind of ship. Okay, didn't end up needing that. And now we can come down and we can build one. Again, it's not going to cost us any influence. Now these wealth tiles, they actually have a base cost of two of any specialist. <laughs> We're completely out of specialists right now that can work. <laughs> that guy's exhausted. He'll, he'll refresh at the end of the era. So we can't build either of those. But we can build this guy right here or this one. I say let's build this economic tile. I'm gonna play it up here. So it has a base cost of one. It's not next to anything, but we have a discount of two because we have two economic inventions, so it's free. Okay, Hephaestus's turn. We just flip their next card and put it in the second position. Okay, so they're gonna come over here. That's the gain influence action. They're gonna move to the first region where they don't have one of their influence tokens. So once again, there are two, so they're gonna move over here to three. If he has a citizen there, he's going to return one. If he didn't have a citizen there, it was fine. It just wouldn't return any. Now he's gonna score points and even though they're on this spot, they're always gonna score the leftmost amount. Now in this case, it's the same, it's five points. And now unfortunately that has a chain and they have one. So they're gonna go down to the next one. They're gonna try to invent. Now this is interesting. They would go up there, but that idea needs sailing. And sailing is over here on the Eureka board. No one has discovered sailing yet. So they're gonna keep going and come all the way over here. That requires the origin of language, which is a common milestone. And they're gonna get cultural tile number six. That was turn two on to turn three. Kronos moves and here is this situation. Oh, I forgot to flip. It's been invented Kronos wants to share it, but because they're not involved in any way, they can't share it. So all they can do is innovate. And that's it. That's all they get to do. They're never going to take any of the bonuses or do any of the chain actions or anything like that. So they're done. And it's on to our turn. And because this is our third turn of the era, instead of placing a pillar, we're going to be moving our epoch pillar to a different location. We cannot stay in the same forum. So we can't just move over to here, no. And of course, we can't move to this forum or that top forum. So we really only have four actions to choose from. Now I think I have a really good action that I want to do. I'm trying to see if there's a cool way that I can do it, because I do have this chain that I'd like to use. It's always good to look for a way that you could chain. I'm going to activate this tile that I just built. Now, to activate an economic tile on your board, you need to use this little economic marker. Now, we start with one. If we were to build in these locations with these other two, we'd get more that we could use. So I'm going to use this right now. Place it on here, and that's just going to let me take a scholar.
Now, that's not going to clear off until the end of the era. So these economic tiles can basically only be used once per era and if you have the tokens to use them. But that scholar is actually going to let me do what I wanted to do in the first place. I'm going to come here and invent. So I want to invent this card right here, this writing. It would take an artisan, but I have this scholar. Now you can't forget when you invent, you also get to take a technology aspiration. And now I'm gonna activate my technology tile that I built before. Now the way these work is one, you have to spend an influence. And then if you've taken one of the two actions that's shown on the tile, you now get to take the other one. And so because I did an invention, I can now share the invention with the world. All it takes is one of my chains and I have to flip the tile over. It's a one time use, once per game. But that's gonna let me immediately share this invention. I'm gonna get the wealth tile and now I'm all filled up. So I'm just gonna place it right here and I'll get to choose what I want to keep um, and what I don't at the end of the turn. I'm then gonna get three points. And get to keep the card. And that's an era three idea. So I now have a two and a three. I just need a four and a five for my goal. That is incredible. And honestly, I do think I wanna keep the wealth tile. I'm gonna just put that aspiration tile away. And now I can build. I'm getting a two discount. Yeah, let's go up here. We'll get a thinker. And that would normally cost one, two, two discount, nothing. And final turn, just wants to present an idea. Got a spot right there. And that's it, no chain action or anything. At the end of era two, quite a bit happens. Hephaestus gets a second chain token. That's not good. And Kronos gets to place another one of their influence markers. It's gonna be four points. We also need to take the cards that we used, shuffle them and put them at the bottom of the action deck. And now Kronos gets to advance eras by taking the next milestone. We can also do this by taking this action right here, this Eureka action. We didn't do that, so we're stuck in era two, but he's gonna move on to era three. Now, the way this works is this bottom milestone gets pushed out, everything slides down, And Kronos has his private milestone become a public one. And then he's just gonna take the rightmost milestone on the Eureka board. Then he just places a citizen on it. And now because there's one remaining, the non-player, in this case, the yellow player, is gonna do the same thing. And since there's one more remaining, we're gonna do the same thing, but it's just gonna come into the common supply. We now deal out the D milestones. And when Kronos advanced to the third era, he moves his little uh, hourglass figure and he's gonna take the furthest right space. That's gonna let him change turn order, but he's already first, so we won't have to worry about that. Now, any sages get returned, and in this case, they're gonna get two points for each one.
our sage actually becomes a scholar. So we just get a scholar and then return them. We would also adjust our uh, influence marker here, but it's fine. All of our exhausted specialists wake up and go home. Our economic markers come back so that we can use them again. We get our two season pillars back, but we leave the epoch one and the same for Hephaestus. And lastly, if we had any idea cards over here or on the board that was from the previous era, so era two, then those would get discarded and replaced. But everything is era three or higher, so we're good to go. We're ready to move right into era three. <laughs>